Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay Barone and welcome to this very first episode of Species Shorts for DNALC Live. Um, before we get started today, I just want to explain a little bit about this series um, and why I decided to do it in the first place. Um, so this is going to be just a really quick snapshot of human evolution. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for the next few weeks, we're going to meet here at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time for just a quick 15-minute discussion about human evolution. We're going to be talking about different groups within the primates, within the hominins, different species, and why we became the way that we are today. So if you're interested in human evolution but don't really know where to start, this is the perfect place for you because I'm going to break everything down really into small little pieces so you can kind of get a better picture about what the human fossil record actually looks like. And we can start talking about what these fossils tell us about the way we are today. Now you might be wondering why I'm choosing to do this. Well, by training, I am an anthropologist. And for those of you that don't know what an anthropologist is or what an anthropologist does, um, basically, in a really broad sense of the word, anthropology is just the study of humans. And so there are different ways we can go about studying humans. Um, but one of the ways, and one of the ways we're going to be focusing on in this series, um, is through the biological evolution of our species. Um, so this is a subfield called biological anthropologist. Um, and that's what I'm trained in. I'm trained as a biological anthropologist. And I've always been really interested in human evolution. Um, and hopefully, if you're watching this, you are too. So what are we going to talk about in today's introduction to the series? Well, what I'd really like to talk about is the hominin group as a whole. I'm going to share my screen here quickly. Um, there we go. So you may have noticed that the first episode of this series had the subtitle, Welcome to the Tribe. Well, what does this mean? What is a tribe? Well, the term tribe is actually a level of classification that we use to get really hyper-specific when we are trying to classify different groups of animals or different groups of organisms. But I'd like to back up a little bit first and talk about how we classify living things in general. So I'd be willing to bet that many of you could name a kingdom, which would be something like the animal kingdom. Um, some of you might be able to name smaller groups like the primate order or the genus Homo, um, but there's actually a lot more to it than that. So take a look at this diagram I've got on the screen here. Um, on this screen, you can see there are actually three different groups in big bold letters, you've got the archaea, eukaryota, and bacteria. Um, these are three major domains of life. So if you think back to when you were a kid, um, or maybe if you are a kid, um, you might have learned that the biggest level of classification was the kingdom level. Um, so we are part of the animal kingdom. But there's actually a level of classification that's a little bit above that, that is even larger. And that's where these three domains come in. Now, if you look really closely at this diagram, what you can see is that within our domain, so we are part of the eukaryote domain, um, there are many different groups. There are plants, there are animals, there are fungi, and there are the protists. So all of these purple things that you see on the screen right here, um, whether they're crustaceans or fish or amphibians or snakes or lizards or turtles, all of those things are part of the animal kingdom, and so are we. Now, specifically, um, as we move through the taxonomic classification of humans, what you're seeing as you move from the top of this chart down to the bottom to the species level is that each group is becoming subsequently much smaller. So like we just talked about, we are part of the animal kingdom. Um, we are part of the chordata phylum. Um, so chordata basically means you have a backbone. Um, we are part of the mammal class. 
So we are in the same level of classification as things like cats and dogs and horses um, and whales and all different members of mammals are all lumped into that group. Um, we are part of the primate order. Um, and some of you may have really good examples of primates that immediately spring to mind. My guess is some of you are maybe thinking of chimpanzees or gorillas, um, maybe orangutans um, or lemurs. Um, lemurs are always a really big one with um, the younger viewers just because uh, of the movie Madagascar. Everybody seems to love the lemurs in that. Um, but there are all different groups of animals classified in as primates and we are primates as well. Um, within the primates, there is a family called hominidae, and again, that's where we fit in. Um, and then, of course, our scientific name is the genus name, so our genus is Homo, and the species name, which is Sapiens. So a lot of times when people talk about the scientific name of things, they're talking about the genus followed by the species. Now, we are the only living member of the genus Homo today. But that wasn't always the case. There have been lots of different members of our genus um, in the past, over the past two and a half million years or so. Um, and there have even been even more members of our family over the last seven million years or so. So let's look at this a little bit closer. So this is sort of the broad classification that I'd be willing to bet a lot of you know these different levels of classification. But let's zoom in a little bit. So you can see on this chart here, um, we have the primate order all the way up at the top. Um, and these are divided into suborders, infraorders. Um, there are all sorts of very specific levels of classification. Um, but there's also the family level. So this is what we were talking about before, hominidae. Um, so everything um, within the great apes, so gorillas, um, chimpanzees, and orangutans, they're all classified within that family with us. Um, and then, of course, we break it down even further. Um, Pongo is the genus for the orangutans. Gorilla is, gorillas, that's pretty self-explanatory. Pan is chimpanzees and bonobos. Um, and then, of course, we have the genus Homo. And if you look in this red circle here, we have the tribe Hominini, or sometimes this is um, referred to more commonly in the less Latinized form as the hominins. So the hominins today only have one living representative. Um, and that group, of course, is modern humans. Um, we find living hominins all over the world um, on all seven continents, although nobody traditionally lives on Antarctica. There are still researchers down there at the research station. Um, so technically, we've got humans on all seven continents. Um, and before our species ever even evolved, there were actually hominins all over the world as well. Um, not in the Americas, so not in North and South America, of course, but on Africa, um, uh, in Europe, in Asia, um, and eventually we got modern humans then in Australia, North America, and South America. So what makes a group classified as a member of the hominins? Um, there are lots of different criteria that could be used, but to answer this question, I'd like you all oh, um, to take a look at the next diagram. Um, just a quick second, though, I just wanted to show you guys this image. Um, even though the DNA Learning Center is closed right now because of the COVID-19 situation, um, we have an entire large hominin exhibit in the DNA Learning Center in Cold Spring Harbor. So once the doors are reopened, I encourage you all to take a look, um, to come visit um, and check out what we've got on display and get really up close and personal with all of the different species that we're going to be talking about in this series. Okay, so back to what I was saying. Um, what makes a hominin a hominin? How do we determine that? Um, well, take a look at the skulls on the top of this diagram. Um, so you can see on the left here, we've got a chimpanzee. On the right, we have a modern human, so that's our species. And these middle three, um, this is an artipithecus skull, uh, right in the middle is an Australopithecus skull, 
and then Homo erectus, which this is the only one on this chart other than our own species that is actually a member of our genus. So just take a look at these and you know try and point out some differences to yourselves. Um, if you're watching with someone, you guys can maybe pause here and, and talk about this a little bit more. But look at the shape of the skull. Look at the teeth. Um, look at the way the top of the jaw, so the maxilla, actually comes out from the front of the face. What about a nose? Is there a bone right here for a nose? Um, there are lots of different things that really sort of differentiate the chimpanzees from the early hominins that first evolved about 7 million years ago um, to the later examples like Homo erectus and modern Homo sapiens. However, when we're trying to find, or rather trying to label what different species are, when an anthropologist finds a new fossil, um, when they're digging in different parts of the world, how do they classify it? Well, there are two main areas that all of the hominins really seem to share in common. So there are these two traits that separate out the hominins from the other non-human primates like chimpanzees and gorillas and orangutans. The first set of characteristics has to do with walking upright, so being bipedal. And you can see that transition represented here in the walking row of this diagram. Um, there is a transition, oops, I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, there we go. Um, so there's a transition from walking around on four limbs and just occasionally standing on two legs to actually having biological adaptations for being bipedal. So walking upright on two legs almost all of the time, if not all of the time. So all of the hominin species have adaptations for this type of bipedal movement. So they're all walking around on two legs. Now, some of the earlier ones are what we would describe as being habitually bipedal rather than being obligate bipeds. So basically, if they're habitual, they have adaptations that allow them to walk upright but they've also got adaptations that allow them to walk around on all fours. So they're not quite full obligate bipeds the way that our species is. By contrast, what we see with some of the later members of the hominin lineage is that they're all obligate bipeds. So that means they're biologically adapted to walking around on two legs. You can crawl around on all fours, um, but it's usually not too comfortable. It's not really the preferred way to move around the environment. Um, so that's the first set of characteristics that help us classify whether or not something should be considered a hominin or something else. The other set of characteristics that really help us classify hominins versus non-hominins um, is the teeth, and in particular, the shape and size of the canine teeth. So if you look at the row below the walking, um, where it's labeled teeth, you can see on the left, you've got the chimpanzee tooth row. And the canine tooth, which is right here, um, is much larger, much pointier, especially when it's compared with the molars that are behind it. By contrast, if you look at the other end of things, um, even starting with Artipithecus and moving forward to modern Homo sapiens, that canine tooth, which um, you can see is all the way on the right, um, that canine tooth really is very small, it's blunted, it's very similar in length to the rest of the teeth around it. So there's a more uniform tooth row, and that changes the way that um, the hominins eat, the kind of diet they have, especially compared with modern chimpanzees. Um, so it makes things just a little bit different. All right, um, so if any of you have any questions that I haven't touched on or that maybe I inspired you to think of, um, please put them either in the chat and the moderator can answer them very quickly, or if the video ends, um, or rather the, re the recording ends and you haven't had a chance to ask a question, you can always post questions in the YouTube comments um, and we'll be sure to get to you soon. 
Um, otherwise, have a wonderful day, and I will see you all on Wednesday.